it seems that the South China Sea issue, indeed, as Professor Zhu mentioned, has become one of the most uh, important uh, issue uh, in our region uh, these days. And of course, added with the uh, preliminary jurisdictional decision of the arbitrations in The Hague, as well as the, I would say, failure of the ADMM Plus, uh, because it's academic, I want to be frank, uh, to issue a statement uh, yesterday or two days ago. I think uh, our region has again came up uh, at the global discussion and debate on where actually we are going. Now, uh, if we would like to see uh, our uh, dear issues, our China Sea issues, uh, I, I would very much uh, try to see it in, in two competing trends. The first one is the trend of uh, the changing of our strategic environment. And the second trend is the opposite one, which is the rising tensions and low level conflict. If you look at the first trend, the changing of our strategic environments, the messages are all positive. First of all, if you look at ASEAN today, ASEAN has indeed matured. ASEAN has already established uh, credible mechanisms. Uh, ASEAN has become a truly international organization with legal personality. We uh, have graduated ourselves uh, to become a, a very strong international organization with a, with a very clear visions of, of creating an ASEAN society, ASEAN communities, uh, political security, economic, and social uh, community. That's the first one. And the second one, we have uh, established a number of infrastructure. We have the most important one is the East Asia Summit. Uh, we are looking at now the RCEP. And we also have uh, the infrastructure of uh, TPP. So these are all the new infrastructures in addition to the ASEAN, ASEAN Plus, uh, APEC, that creates a web of cooperations uh, between countries in our region. The third uh, trend is the fact that uh, ASEAN and country in East Asia has become the global economic driver. Now, not very many uh, people look at the number of the ASEAN GDP. Uh, the ASEAN GDP combined is higher than Russia. So when I hear people saying that Russia is still a superpower, I beg to defer. If your GDP is less than $2 trillion, you cannot be a superpower. <laughs> you may have a strong military a chunk of that GDP, but if your GDP combined is just less than ASEAN, then you know, it's, it's, we have actually become superpower in our own rights, uh, ASEAN. And um, uh, this is a factor that not many people have looked at it in that way. Uh, we have rising wealth. Uh, we have rising wealth in East Asia. We have rising wealth in uh, Southeast Asia as well. And fourth, we perform better politically and socially than most of the world. And look at the Middle East today. The Middle East today is probably the most chaotic uh, time ever. In the old days, when you talk about the Middle East, you talk about uh, Israeli and Palestinian conflict. Now. It's everywhere, Lebanon, Syria, uh, North Africa, uh, Yemen, uh, Saudi, uh, all of these different simmering conflicts uh, in the Middle East have created waves of refugees going to Europe. Millions and millions of people, thousand people died uh, just achieving that place. Africa is a mixed picture. Uh, Latin America, same, is a mixed picture. Venezuela is in a mess. Uh, and this region is much better if you look uh, around uh, the globe. And the fifth one of the changing uh, trend is that we have a number of regional initiatives in our regions. We have the One Belt, One Road of China. Indonesia has the uh, Global Maritime uh, Access of Fulcrum. 
where we are now inviting a major investments uh, coming to uh, Indonesia. We we are looking at the European investment in port infrastructure. Uh, I my office have been talking to a number of Singaporean investments uh, in terms of shipbuilding uh, and also green economic zone as well as the. Um, uh, cluster of economic development in many different parts of Indonesia. So we are, we are looking at lots of uh, business opportunity, trade opportunity, economic opportunity uh, in our regions. And I heard that India is going to have the first uh, maritime summit India uh, this uh, February, which I think India is not only look is, but now act is. And that means also uh, India is developing its uh, maritime policy uh, in our neighborhood as well. The, the six uh, interesting developments of uh, our strategic environment is the fact that many uh, Asian countries today resort to third party uh, legal processes. I've heard arguments that we Asians we don't settle problem to the court. Well, really, you go to Maxwell House. <laughs> Maxwell House just down the road is brimming with arbitration cases, thousands of arbitration cases of, a of Asian countries. So we Asians are actually settling differences through uh, adjudications, through arbitrations, through third parties. So we are, the message is simple. We are becoming a more rule-based society, whether we like it or not. And we are uh, looking at a peaceful avenue, which is law, uh, to settle differences in, in the uh, business, in the investment, and also in uh, different sensitive issues. Uh, Indonesia and uh, Malaysia, we went to the ICJ to settle our sovereignty dispute. Uh, Malaysia and Singapore also went to the ICJ for a maritime uh, sovereignty dispute. And also you have a disputes on uh, certain issues, uh, Malaysia and Singapore took them to the ITLA. So uh, the culture of international law, I mean, if you will, that term, uh, it's developing here also in our, in our region. So all of these trends, uh, six different trends, in, in my opinion, are the, the positive trends uh, in our uh, region. It, it encompasses uh, security infrastructure, economic infrastructure and as well as legal uh, infrastructure uh, and the stability, the political stability, social stability, uh, it's, it's there. If you look very carefully, I think uh, this could be the reason why uh, ISIS is not developing uh, in our part of the world as opposed to in the Middle East because of this uh, different infrastructure that helps society in our part of the world weather uh, 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 different uh, extremist uh, radical uh, uh, thinking and development. The other trend which is not so positive is the rising tensions and the existence of low-level conflicts. And uh, Professor Zhu mentions about the relationship between the rising uh, China and the resident power of the United States, which many analysts uh, then link this to the uh, famous Thucydides trap, where 16 cases in the world of competition between rising power and resident power, 14 ended up in war. Uh, many people are looking at that model, whether uh, we will actually see that model in our part of the world, which I think uh, we should strive uh, not to have that kind of model in our part of the world. We have seen how it is in the past. Uh, we have seen how economic development in our part of the world was trampled because of conflict between um, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Singapore, between uh, countries in China. We don't want that uh, uh, to, to come again and resurface in our part of the world. And uh, this rising tension and low-level conflict brings also to another question, which is the ASEAN centrality. The ADMM Plus, I think, is, a, is a, unfortunately probably 
uh, it could be seen as a symptom that ASEAN is not as strong as it used to be. Or uh, because of many different factors, uh, on a positive sentence maybe, on the, we need to develop more strengthened uh, uh, ASEAN, uh, especially in the wake of the uh, ASEAN uh, community development. So I think uh, if we want to maintain the centrality, a lot of things, a lot of homeworks has to be done uh, within ASEAN uh, itself. So these are the, the two elements within the context of the rising tensions that could, could shape, actually, uh, the way such an issue develops uh, and the other way around. So these two changing, two big elements, the changing of our strategic environments and the rising tensions can influence the South China Sea uh, issue debates, but also at the same time, South China Sea issue can also influence those uh, us two big elements. It can influence, it can, it can come in a two ways, positive and negative. Uh, those positive uh, changes in our environments, the maturity of ASEAN, the new infrastructures, the global economic driver, uh, the major uh, initiatives could create a restraining factor so that South China Sea issue is not going out of control. Okay. But then on the other way around, uh, South China Sea issue can become a factor that uh, could create uh, an additional unfortunate uh, element in which those positive developments uh, could become a negative development. So it could, it could work uh, both ways. But what is, what is our fundamental interest? At the end of the day, that should be our questions. Do we want chaos or peace? I think at the end of the day, uh, all the big players in the region, all countries in our region should, should ask that question. Do we want chaos or do we want peace? Very simple. And each choices will, will bring uh, many different uh, steps to be able to, to, to do that. Now if we, I could give, give you an example of how a sensitive, sovereignty dispute can remain a peaceful dispute without necessarily adding a military component in that. Gibraltar. Gibraltar is, is, is a problem between the British and the Spanish since 1840 something. You can Google it yourself. They have been fighting, the Brits and the Spaniards, on the status of Gibraltar. But they are both members of the European Union. They don't add the element of navy. They don't add the element of military. They don't militarize the issue uh, uh, in, in such a way. So why can't we do that? I think this is also a big question we have to ask ourselves. Why can we? Asian, who are supposed to be more patient than the, than the West, uh, Western people. Why cannot we have that type of relationships? Yes, we have unresolved sovereignty dispute for over 200 years, but we still manage to be a, a partner in development in many different aspects uh, between the British and the Spanish. They're part of one big chunk organization called European Union. So. Uh, these are a very clear example, actually, that uh, we can work uh, together uh, to create the peace and stability in the region. But do we need to go that far? Do we need to learn from the Europeans? I don't think so. Look at our regions. Look at the Straits of Malacca and Singapore. Indonesia, Malaysia, and Singapore, since 1977, we manage the safety, the security, and the environmental protections of the Straits of Malacca and Singapore while we know exactly there are no maritime boundaries in this water. So why, why did these three countries able to do that? Because Indonesia, Malaysia, and Singapore realize that there is a greater public good, which is the safety, the economic development uh, of our regions. 
There is no EEZ uh, boundaries in Straits of Malacca. Uh, our western part of Straits of uh, Singapore, it's, it's concluded, but not the eastern part. It's concluded, but not yet ratified. We don't have maritime boundaries in Johor. As a matter of fact, since 1977, we have still a, a problem between Malaysia and Singapore on uh, Petra Bangka, Batu Pute. And yet, uh, we three of us are able to create peace and stability to the management of Straits of Malacca and Singapore. Uh, another example, the CTI, the uh, Coral Triangle Initiative. It's, uh, it's an initiative that Malaysia, the Philippines, Indonesia, PNG, Solomon Island, and Timor-Leste, uh, six of us, we took this initiative to protect the coral reef in the Sulawesi Sea and the surrounding waters. Again, in an area where no maritime boundary exists. Uh, Sulawesi Sea, we have uh, negotiation in Malaysia, not concluded yet. We are, we are working with uh, the Philippines to conclude the continental shelf, maybe a later stage, but now we have signed an agreement, but not yet ratified. Uh, there is no maritime boundary between, uh, say, the Philippines and um, PNG. Uh, but we are able to work together, these six countries, on the management of natural resources, the management of the conservation of the coral reef, which is the home of the fish. In such a vast area, no maritime boundaries whatsoever. We have a secretariat. We have the SecGen, we have the directors, we have the activities. So can you imagine we are working together in an area without maritime boundaries? So we don't have to learn far uh, to Europe. We, we have to actually have it here in our region. Straits of Malacca in Singapore, we have a meeting uh, between the law enforcement, between the Navy on a regular meeting, regular patrol. Uh, we have a uh, biannual meeting on the safety of navigations. We created what we call the uh, electronic charts. We created a technical working group on navigations. We created uh, waterways that, although we know some part belong to the other party without maritime boundaries, but still uh, international navigation can pass through very nicely. And the most important element is that under UNCLOS, uh, countries are obliged to work together in a semi-enclosed sea, like in the South China Sea. So if you have the models in Europe, how you deal with sensitive issues peacefully, if you have a model here in Southeast Asia on, on actually doing it just close to home, and you have the legal obligations uh, under UNCLOS, it should, should be walking the park to manage the South China Sea issue. If everybody has the uh, political will to do that. I think uh, these are the model of management that uh, are available for, for all of us to, to look at. Now, the last part I think uh, that I would like to mention again is a very fundamental question, which is what is the real choice that we would like uh, to make. Uh, we want to have a chaos or do we want to have peace? Do we really want to uh, create stability in the regions or do we want to uh, reduce this type of stability uh, in the region? So I think with that, uh, I hope this uh, event, uh, Patan, this dialogue, could become a really dialogue, not a monologue. Uh, it could be uh, two ways. It could be also uh, what I call as a listening tour, where the officials who come here as personal capacity or think tank who come here as a think tank capacity would then share with their government uh, on, on how they feel, and especially on how we in, uh, in Southeast Asia uh, see uh, this issue, and especially both uh, uh, Indonesia and, and Singapore, because we are, both are not claimant. Uh, but we can see things rather differently 
and I think uh, uh, I'm not saying I represent uh, Singapore in, in, in my speech, but I would say that we both, Indonesia and Singapore, share uh, a claim, which is a claim of peace and stability in our region. Thank you very much.